wealthy experts where we are bringing on experts in their field to help us build effectively a wealthy life. Greetings, everybody. This is Dominic Neshi, and this is the first episode of Wealthy Experts. Now, the person that we have today, I had to have him on the show as our numero uno, Chris Booth, the co-founder, CEO, managing director, partner, King Keep Dingling going. Keep at, going. at Lydian Finance. Now, Chris and I have known each other for, what, more than a decade, surely. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, he helped me want my first mortgage, actually. He wrote the first loan for me. Um, and it's it's all been uphill <laughs> from there. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, I remember doing that lo- that loan as well, Dom. So um, anyway, hello everyone. Um, I'm Chris. Nice to meet you all. But um, yeah, I remember doing that loan, Dom. What a seems like a decade ago as well. Yeah, the bucket shop home loans at that point in time. <laughs> I was the CEO of that as well, was I? Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I mean, I wanted to get Chris on the show today because he is a finance expert. He's been doing this for a very, very long time. His business is rocketing off to success. He's got a whole host of brokers in his team. And I felt like it would be great for to ask Chris a whole bunch of questions about the market and what's going on. So, Boothie, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. I really do appreciate catching up with you, and it's always a joy just having a chat. You're welcome, mate. Anytime. So, let's kick it off. I mean, first question: What's going on? What's happening in your business, in life? What's what's <laughs> happening at the moment? Okay. Um, well, let's let's start in life because I think that's more complicated than business. Business is easy right now, eh? Um, yeah, uh, 10 years on, I've got an 18-year-old daughter. She's um, yeah, she's legally able to buy me a pint, but the uh, the pubs are shut, so that's disappointing. Um, she drives my car more than me and, and crashes my car. I've got a 16-year-old daughter out driving the car right now, probably doing some damage. Um, and she's she's out partying and having to pick her up from parties. Um, my wife has got a great social life and partying as well. Um, um, and it's basically just me, my boy, and the dog. So uh, that's what's happening in my life right now, locked down in Sydney. Uh, nothing. And I can exciting. see you're in the basement. It's actually the laundry. If, <laughs> if you spoke to Kelly, she'd tell you this is the Lydian HQ is the laundry first, and then Lydian HQ second. So um, yeah, but um, no, I'm I'm in a good space right now, mate. You know, Lydian, like you said before, is going really good. And uh, family-wise, Kelly, uh, myself, and the kids, you know, it's tough times, but we're we're all, we're all getting on and and do some simpler things in life, I think, which um, I'm sure people um, will understand. But yeah, and, and join it, mate. It's um, It's been a good time for us. Yeah, we're all locked up. You're in a beautiful home over there with the family. So there's lots to be grateful for. Sure. Um, what, are, what are you seeing in the market at the moment? I mean, you've got yeah. your finger on the pulse across all the states and you're writing millions of dollars worth of home loans. What are you seeing out there? Oh, look, it's, it's, um, it's an interesting time, really, I suppose. You know, you'll you'll look at um, you know some of the the downs downsides of what we've had to go through in the last eighteen months. But you know, on the flip side of that, it's been really good and refreshing to see a lot of the lenders um, adopt technology and 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 really digitize the process a lot more. So you know, the the efficiencies that we're seeing with regards us one working with clients, but then secondly working with lenders is really refreshing. And and I'm talking simple things, right? But but simple things like DocuSign you know, electronic documents and things like that. So, you know, for me, some of the big pain points in the past has always been that massive paper burden for the application process. And that is quite quickly um, had to change in this environment, which has been a a real plus for our industry. Um, Secondly, um, you know, crazy interest rates. I mean, we we talk, we talk about interest rates and affordability, but, um, you know, working with these, these interest rates rates right now, it's sometimes you've just got to stop and check yourself and, and think, is it really a 2% or a 1%, you know, 1.99% interest rates. That's, that's pretty crazy. But I think, you know, as a, as a mortgage broker and a professional, we've got to have more sensible conversations with our clients to talk about interest rates, um, where they will get to get back to be, to be a norm. So that's, that's difficult because uh, some a lot of a lot of the new borrowers are borrowing a lot of money to to, to get on that property uh, platform uh, and really gearing pretty hard. So we're seeing a lot of those conversations, and and um, you know that's that's tough being an old school banker, seeing a lot higher interest rates. Um, other things as well, like the the real refreshing thing for um, us right now is there is a, a big changing all of the credit policies of the different lenders as well. So it, uh, I think sort of four or five years ago, the, the lenders were being forced to have a very homogenous 
credit policy, whereas now they've got a lot more flexibility around their credit policy as well. And what that means is um, you know, you're not driven to like the CBA just because it's got the best rate. CBA actually don't have a great appetite for certain types of borrowers. And then you've, that opens the door for like First Mac or a, a Macquarie Bank who've got a specific type of client they like to look after. And then also we've got other lenders like Liberty, Pepper um, and Latrobe who've, who are quite prevalent supporting uh, that self-employed space now as well. So really when, when a client is coming to get um, advice around lending, we really, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of, of that process is around trying to make sure they've got the appropriate lender in place because there's a lot of differences around those lenders from a credit policy um, apart from the interest rate conversation as well you know so it sounds like a few things one it's getting easier to write a loan from a technological point of view you don't have to use you know wet ink it's a matter of doing digital signatures you can speed up the process it's more convenient for us as a lender and hmm. um, you're, it sounds like you're trying to be mindful of interest rates. Like you sound like you're being prudent in that. Yes, you can go and get 1.99 or uh, an interest rate with a two in it, but you're also sort of conscious and a little concerned for the long term implications that interest rates will come up at some point in time, whether it's five or 10 years. It's just something that people should be thinking about. But one thing that stood out to me is it sounds like it's the, the, it's time for that there really is space in the market for a really good financial specialist or a broker because it's not just as you said homogenous everyone's doing the same thing yeah. credit policy is changing from one bank to the other whether it's first second or third tier lenders and it's horses for courses you really need to be working closely with a broker to figure out what is the appropriate policy for you to get the deal done yeah, I think I think so. I think, and again, there's, there's probably around that as well. There's an actual shift in mentality of the broker. You know, the, because we're getting, because we've sort of the, the the application process per se is getting a bit easier. We now need to be seen as advice givers, and and we're sort of filling in that gap where the financial advice industry has sort of moved up to that. Um, you know, the, the more high net wealth individuals, it's left a little bit of a gap there for the mortgage broker to step into that space to be advice givers. So, you know, we're having more conversations about cash flow, making sure that you've got, you know, an estate plan post your settlement, making sure you go do a review on your insurances. And I'm talking about your, your personal insurances, not your general insurance. So we are, we are having more, I suppose, personalized conversations around the whole of the, the loan application and what it means to, you know, buy property, get debt and be responsible, you know, and, and even down to the extent where I'm giving, you know, parental advice. I don't know whether I should or not, but um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all the stuff we've got to do. You've got to give life, you know, got, got to give some life examples when we're talking to our clients because um, yeah, we've done a lot of, I've done a lot of applications personally. And as a team, we've seen lots and lots of different applications. So you've got to give examples and, um, and um, educate your clients as well. So what do you think are the key takeaways for, you know, your, your average punter out there? For me, listening in as a viewer or listener, and, and from everything that you've just said based on, you know, int interest rates being low, credit policies are different from bank to bank. What's the one key takeaway uh, that I could take out of this? What, what should yeah. I do if I'm going to go and get a loan today? Well, look, I mean, think of it like this. Um, if I get a snivel and a cold, um, I'm probably better off going to the doctor to go get diagnosed rather than going on Google first and going, oh, my God, I've got cancer and I'm going to die. Maybe, maybe we need to cut that one out, but probably not that extreme. But, the, you know, I think a lot of people, um, they, they find it very easy to go and, and do a lot of research first online and, and do all of that. And they, they always end up with the cheapest rate and a product which is most of the time un unobtainable for them financially. So, you know, my recommendation is the first person you should speak to is, you know, family and friends to see if they've used a professional which they would give a recommendation for. Secondly, um, if that, that recommendation for a professional is either an accountant or a lawyer or a financial planner, ask them who their preferred mortgage broker would be, you know? So really what I'm saying about that is you've got to build your, uh, over your life, you've got to build your professional circle of go-to people. You know, you and I did our first loan together and, uh, and you know, we have conversations about your, you know, the next property and the next property and those people are in your sort of trusted circle for advice. So really the first thing is, is find, people who are experienced and have been recommended by um, someone that you trust as well to have them as your deal team.
uh, for the future. So that would be the first thing rather than going to Google. Um, and secondly, you know, <laughs> once you've once you've got those uh, once you've got those people in your world, um, yeah, just find out a bit about you know the the life examples that they've um, gone through themselves. I mean, I've got property and I've made mistakes in property. Um, I've got investments in you know in businesses. Um, I've mis- made mistakes in business. Um, I've had lots of different types of jobs. Um, I've got married once and I'm still married. I don't know whether that's a mistake yet, but you'll have to speak to Kelly. Um, I've had three kids and I've made mistakes with those guys. But again, you know, you want someone who's who's actually um, probably a little bit more worldly than um, than the average. That 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 be sort of my tip. Yeah, I appreciate that. It's good to talk to people that have done some things before you. Yeah. You know, it may not always be relevant, but it's certainly anecdotal evidence. You can learn from other people's mistakes. Stand on the shoulders of titans, as they say. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of my biggest mistakes ever, I bought a property in Irmington years and years ago <laughs> as a family home. <laughs> and um, that wasn't wife, the mistake, was it? Buying it? Well, well, it, um, Anyway, so, but the, the long, the upshot was Kel, my wife didn't want to live in Irmington. She wanted to live in the Eastern suburbs. So we did it in the Eastern suburbs. And by the time I built up the credit cards expenses to look after the kids at that time, we decided that Irmington property was going nowhere because we had a couple of flat years in the property market. Um, so we sold it and, and got rid of that property. Now that property today would be, you know, would be an expensive an expensive asset um, for us to have kept and we should have probably muscled on through those period that period of time um but again you know like we all make mistakes but on the flip side of that i bought you know bought well in a super fund and invested in a property in newcastle which has done extremely well and that's paying off its um it's it's amortizing its debt it's paying itself off and i'll own an unencumbered unencumbered appreciating asset over time um i've had i've got an apartment in bondi junction you know which has done very well for me and we bought it at a great time but what were the principles around buying that property well i wanted a property in a great location it had to have a garage because in that little local area it was um you know the land was pretty tough to get as it were and um yeah bondi junction it's a it's a it's a key center for you know aspirational young people so that was one of the reasons we did it so i'm always sort of you know trying to trying to build my portfolio um and advise the, the the things that the thought process i went through with my clients sorry i went through myself and advise our clients the same way yeah i completely agree it's um it's easy but expensive to make your own mistakes you mm. know it's tempting to go do things everything yourself and then you make the mistake and it's very expensive it's much much harder to go and listen to someone else because the temptation's there to go run things your own way you know no one really ever wants to go and take quality advice especially if they're telling them something they don't want to hear yeah sometimes you just got to take the pill and and swallow it you know that's it um but yeah look i think i think for me um, and i've got people i turn to for advice i mean you know many of the people that i would turn to for advice and those guys have you know they're, they're certainly specialists in their field which i think is really important and two you know that they've you know, they've done things which I'm I'm aspiring to be. You know, so like being a business a business owner. This is new for me, being you know the principal of a, a business like Lydian. But um, you know, it, it's great to have conversations with other people who've who've managed and uh, been involved in growing and, and building a business before. And that that's an aspiration for me too. You know. So Boothy, I want to move into the next section. That is, talk, let's talk about wealth. I mean, mm. you've been in a financial planning business, you've been, you know, owner, you've exited, you, you now run a mortgage business, you're helping people build wealth on a daily basis. But I think that you live a relatively wealthy life as well. I mean, you've got a well-balanced uh, home life, you've got your hobbies, you like to go sailing, you've got all these different things. And I think that you're a worldly guy. So what, what, would, you, what would you say is your definition of, of wealth or or, or building a wealthy life as, as you see mm. it. You know, what's funny is that when you sent me the, like a, a bit of a sheet last night, I kind of, I went to Kelly and I said, Oh, I've been asked about, you know, what it means to be wealthy. And I said, yeah. I think I've miserably failed, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's not quite true. So, you know, like I think, you know, Kelly and I have a very sensible, we, we, you know, we want to live a, a really, really good lifestyle. We want to be in a great area. We want our kids to have, you know, good holidays. Um, we want to have, you know, our, my, my, my parents to come over to Australia. Um, so, you know, with regards to our day-to-day expenses and things we do, yeah, look, we, we live an extremely good life and, and quite a lavish life to some extent. So, you know, we, we're not, we're not saving for a rainy day. We're actually trying to have, you know, good holidays and, and experiences, which will, um, 
you know, carry the test of time and we'll be looking back in 10 years and going, what a, what a great thing. And I do that personally as well. So when you said before about the sailing, I learned to sail with a good friend of mine uh, 10 years ago. My aspiration was to learn to sail, um, own a boat and then travel around the world. Well, I've done the learn to sail. I've owned a boat. I've owned two boats. It's only they're only small boats. And I've sailed as far as Sydney to um actually nelson bay so there you go so that's as far as i've been but you've got to get out of the comfort of the harbor at some stage so you know th those are those are goals for me so i'm, I'm doing the things which I, I love and enjoy um you know the other thing i I'm, in, I'm learning right now so from an educational point of view i've just signed on for a course to become a, a skipper on a boat which I, I'm, I would like to do in the future so i'm always investing in personal development things as well as trying to invest in um you know wealth assets as well you know Lydian for me was always about building a business which one I'm proud of but two has got um, you know it's, it's got a value in the future to be you know a, a retirement plan for me as well but I also want to wake up every day and be excited about working in a business which I'm I'm proud of and I'm building and I'm building you know a lifelong asset as well I mean I look at wealthy and you know I see you on the streets and it's it's great and I've, I've seen you know when you started with us working or doing some administration and planning, being the property boss of our business, and then went overseas and traveled. I think I even told you to go traveling. I think that was probably one of the best <laughs> things to do. But then when you came back and you were, you know, you became a, you know, a really good property um, expert in your field uh, and now owning your own business, you know, I look at you and go, wow, you know, I have aspirations to do similar things uh, that you've done as well, Dom. I mean, you, you're definitely one of those people I look at in my world who've achieved some fantastic things and have got some really cool things for you in the future as well. So again, you know, it's, it's about, you know, having those plans and aspiring to do something better for yourself, but also for your family as well. So w thank you, by the way. It's very gracious of you to say that. I appreciate it. Uh, what I took out of that is it, it sounds like building that wealthy life for you is having, you know, that mixture of, work-life culture, building the, the work that you're doing is something that you believe in. You're waking up every morning and you're building something towards your future, but then, you know, not spending all your money just on, you know, uh, building wealth. It's actually living your life as well. You know, spending that disposable income, having experiences and setting those long-term goals. Hey, I'm going to sail around the world and I've got to start the journey from today. Yeah. learning to, to sail the boat and, and pull the cords and everything else is it's, it's, it's a journey. hundred percent. And, and the first day I went on a boat, I wouldn't even know what the cords did. I don't think I do now. I've sailed with good people who show me how to sail, which is great. But you know, on the flip side of that, I like a, I like a beer, which sailing, you can have a beer while you sail around the Harbor as well. And um, yeah, look, the, the, the elements in the environment and the Harbor are always different and changing. So, you know, for me, it's a really cathartic moment when you're out sailing it cleanses your, your thoughts about the, the some of the shitty things that happen in your day. And you really got to be on your game, kind of pulling those sheets and, and making the, you know, the sales work and stuff. And one sale is never the same as the next sale, which I think for me is exhilarating, which, you know, that, that's what I like. And, you know, some of the best times I've had in my life have been on the water, but also you're sailing with mates as well, which is cool. I mean, another hobby of mine is to go hiking. I love to go in the bush uh, put my backpack on and, and go walking for a few days. And um, Kelly gave me the, you know, the, um, she gave me the, the ability to go to central Australia the other year and walk uh, Larapinta trail with a few mates. So we went off in the bush in the you know red center, seven days, sorry, five days walking, two days beer drinking in Alice Springs, you know, which is pretty cool. Um, but I, again, you know, I look back at those pictures and with fond memories, but the experience about, you know, being in that environment was, was pretty cool for me. It was an expensive trip, but, um, yeah, it was, it was very cool. So it really, it sounds like you really value your experiences. And I know that talking to and having shared many beers with you, what would you say is, you know, in amongst all that, what's your one, what's your, your wealthy 1% on, you know, what's your one, one thing that you could give to our listeners, our viewers, that they could start today to help them building a wealthier life? Um, the, a wealthier life. I think number what, what, I mean, one of those questions you said yesterday, what, what, are, what are some of the top tips? Um, never be afraid to ask for help or ask for advice. I think that's one thing for me, you know, if you see someone who's done something which you want to do, you know, do the research about it, but find a person who's actually experienced that before they can give you the real, you know, the real nitty gritty around that um and I, I, 
this is my this is my operational um, saying for Lydian. Yeah, and uh, I found it purely for the fact I'm into a bit of old school hip hop and and um, you know that kind of music. But Arrested Development, you remember those guys? Vaguely. Okay, they had they've got a song that goes. Uh, I actually in, know I do Arrested Development. They do Everyday People. Every yeah, Everyday yeah. People. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. We'll give a man a fish he will eat for today. Teach him how to fish and he'll fish <laughs> for it. No, no, too much. <laughs> he'll fish forever. <laughs> but for me, right, it, it, it really holds true, right? What, what's the point in just give it, being given something? If you learn about how to do it and you kind of um, embrace the experience and then you learn how to do it yourself, that's a really, really cool thing. And then you've taken that next step to, to you know, to being quite fulfilled. So for me, that's a, that's a very wealthy sort of um, saying. And the song's pretty cool too. So for you, your, your sort of 1% wealth hack is to invest in learning in the, into the process, whatever it is that you're doing, go and ask for a mentor, ask for help, but then yep. invest yourself in the process, not just ask for the solution. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You've got to be, you've got to, be able do, to it? do it yourself. Yeah. Don't just learn it on a, in a book and read about it. You've got to go out there in the real world and, and experience it. Um, you know, if you're thinking about buying a property, go find out about, you know, how to buy the property research, online find a, a professional mentor to speak about that and then make you know in the appropriate time jump in you're never gonna it's never going to be perfect the first time you do it you know you could have bought this you could have done that you could have done this but you just got to get your feet wet um to experience what it's like and then to then have a barbecue conversation about that next i mean you know for yourself when you bought your first property it was you know it was a challenge yeah that was tough that was a pain the, in the ass <laughs> but but that property you know it gave you so much for the next one when you know and i don't even think it took long to get the next one did it really no no it didn't i think i asked you you know what can i buy the next one you said no <laughs> <laughs> and then can't. you said i've done it i already bought it how can i buy it now what was what was ray albrighton's um comment um uh it, you you bite off more than you can chew, but chew like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then chew like fuck. That's a pretty, that's a pretty good, um, yeah, that's a pretty good, yeah, that's a pretty good saying. Yeah, so I look, I, I, I totally respect that because, you know, for me, I would have been a bit more nervous and a bit more kind of, you know, reserved about doing that. But, you know, you had the gumption. You said, now nah, I'm doing it. I'm going to get the second property. I'm going to get the third property. Chris, come with me on this journey and you just got to help me out. You get, get my back. And I'm going, okay, let's do it, you know? So that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's good having the right people in your corner. Now, you know, one of the funny things is you're into personal development. You read lots of books. You're watching different TV shows next to Kelly on your iPad. You know, you're doing soul searching in the middle of the desert and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So you're a modern day Buddha, I would say, a philosopher. Um, what's, what's one thing that you have seen, heard, experienced recently? Like what's one lesson that... that that's really stuck with you recently? Maybe in something that you, you heard today or whatever, or from a TV show or a quote from The Godfather, whatever, you know? <laughs> oh, that's a really tough question. What, what, I'm trying to figure out what, um, what TV shows. I don't, learn a, <laughs> I, don't, I don't learn a lot from TV. I don't watch a lot of TV, right? Yeah. Uh, rock and Roll is my favorite movie. So I don't know whether that, you know, um, whether that says a lot about me. I listen to a lot of music. Um, yeah. And that, that sort of gets me, that takes me away. What are my learnings from that? Um, or maybe just, maybe a recommendation. What's one thing that our, our viewers and listeners, whatever, they can go take away and say, hey, that's a cool TV show or a movie. Let's make it even simpler. Yeah, do. Yeah, please do. Um, I'm re-watching the Anthony Bourdain TV show. You know, the cooking guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Uncharted or Unearthed or oh, Anthony Bourdain. I know which one you're talking the about. Travel one. Well, I, like, I mean, that for me is perfect. I'd love to be, I'm aspirational. I'd love to do that. I reckon that'd be great. Travel around the world, eat food, meet nice people, experience new cultures. That's a real cool thing. And while we're locked up right now, that, that kind of gets me a bit depressed, you know, watching it. <laughs> but it's a cool uh, thing. No, I like watching those TV shows. They're good. Um, I'm, I'm with you. I've been watching MasterChef and, and I, I'm seeing all of these different countries and I feel like I'm somehow traveling again. Yeah, who's who's the English chef as well? I like the the English chef, the Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's who's the uh, bald headed English guy with the little the little Yorkshire terrier? I don't know. He's got a he's got a place over here in Nelson Bay, actually. Um, 
We could Google it. Can we Google? Uh, live? Yeah, you can do. Um, Neil Perry, no. Chef um, Nelson Bay. Rick Stein. Rick Stein. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. He's, he's one of my, my go-tos. I like him. And I like Ainsley as well. You know, the, the Caribbean cook. Yes, yes, yes. But, but so yeah, I like I like traveling, cooking, and um, yeah, the adventure. They're my go-to's, and it, it just you know it's good for the soul. Well, I mean, we've kind of gone all over the shop today, so I want to bring you back to to something tangible. Um, this next segment is it's you know I, I want to it's about leaning on the network. There's people that are listening to this show or watching this show, and. I feel like we can help them, but they can also help us. There's a wide network of people out there, professionals running businesses, you know, people working in different organizations. So, I mean, the first question is, um, how can you help our audience? What can they do? What can they rely upon you? How can you help them if they need something? Is it just mortgage broking? What's your area of expertise? How can they find you, reach in? What can you help them with? Yes, I mean, the- Firstly, I mean, I do do mortgage broken, right? That's no problems. And I can introduce people to people who can get them financed. That's easy. And this is the boss of uh, Lydian coming behind. Hey, Kelly. Hey, do you want to say hello to Dom? We're recording as well. You've got to be in the shot. <laughs> um, so the laundry's active. But um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, I, I mean, we brokering no problems and, and finding a loan no problems but my background as well I've been interested in, in you know in businesses as well for a long time so you know my, my old uh, banking days I was a corporate relationship manager for you know uh, looking after accountants financial planners um, you know building businesses uh, real estate businesses so my experience with you know dealing with lots and lots of different businesses are there so you know reach out a, a, about that Um other other things is you know, if you're looking for a, you know good professionals in your world, more than happy to introduce you to my deal team. That they may not be great for you, they might not may not be a right fit for you. But again, you know, I'm happy to open doors up to the the professionals I use and, and value their advice in my world as well. So yeah, that that's something I'm more than happy to offer. Awesome. That so that people can rely upon you for mortgages certainly, and if people are you know professionals running their own businesses and they have more complex matters. It's good to come and talk to you. And yeah. is and is there something that you're working on or, or what do you need help with in your organization? What's happening in your world? If people want to reach out to you to lend you a hand, are you building a website or are you, you're getting your car fixed? Uh, what's happening in your world that you could lend a hand that, that you could lend a hand? I think I think most importantly is Lydian is is my big focus right now. We're trying to we're trying to grow a brokerage firm, a, a really strong community. So we're looking for good mortgage brokers who maybe you know don't want to do it all on the, on their own, and we'll want to work in a, in a partnership um, like Lydian. Um, so that that's something we're looking for. You know, we're looking for for good mortgage brokers who just want a, a home and community to share some of the great things that we're doing is, you know, we're, we're processing all the home loans. We're doing all the back office work for our mortgage brokers. We're making it compliant, but also, also as well, we've got a really cool community of lots of experienced people who can w- workshop deals and support that deal process. The other thing I'm, we, we're looking for is we've got this wealth of experience with brokers and we're looking to partner up with businesses who know they've got, you know, great clients, which need, that service, but they don't have the um, technical ability or the income to to hire a person bespoke to their business. So if they're wanting a plug-in service, you know, plug-in Lydian mortgage brokers in partnership, um, yeah, we're looking for people who who are looking to provide a service and support their clients, but do it in partnership with another business. So that's the um, that's Lydian for us. Chris, thank you very much for today. Um, it's such a pleasure having you as our number one wealthy expert. Uh, and you've been a mountain of knowledge. I'm sure there's so much here to unpack. And for anyone out there that is looking to jump in and help Chris build his Lydian team, reach out to him at Lydian. Is it L-Y-D-I-A-N? Yep, .com.au, yep. And if any of you out there have enjoyed the show, like, subscribe, and all that fun stuff, hope to see you at the next episode. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Dom. Appreciate it.